Legislators, you oversee those financial institutions, and it's vital that your organizations look like the communities, uh, the institutions you regulate ultimately serve. So uh, I, I appreciate some of the responses you've given, but I want to make clear that it's not enough to hire a diverse workforce, but you must ensure your leadership and senior staff are also diverse. Currently, only 8% of NCUA's senior staff, 3.9% FDIC's executive management, and 5.6% of the OCC's senior level positions, for example, are Latino. I think we can all agree that the largest, pop, uh, largest minority population in America growing exponentially, that doesn't work. Um, so can you all commit to significantly increasing Latino representation in your senior positions? I'll start, Senator, and absolutely. Uh, for me, inclusion is highly important. Having diverse views and perspectives need to be brought to the table. Um, and I, I, we recognize that our Hispanic uh, hiring is a weakness for the agency, that we are underperforming there, and we are going to be working on that to bring more people in. Right. Chair McWilliams? Absolutely, Senator. And I can tell you also that I have some numbers in front of me that we have an overall 2.6% increase in minority workforce uh, um, um, overall numbers since uh, I assumed my chairmanship compared to 2.4% over the eight years prior. And 34% of our 2020 examiners, uh, new hires, were minorities. And our examiners represent about 50% of our workforce. And 31% of our overall workforce are minorities. The numbers speak... I was talking about senior I, I senior understand, staff. Senator. And and I, I, I appreciate those numbers. But the people in the, the corporate boardrooms and uh, senior executive management suites and the people in your senior executive management are critical players in developing policies and having sensitivities to communities. So I hope you can do better. Uh, Mr. Sue? So we recently uh, had a town hall where I talked about exactly this issue in terms of progress um, for Latinos and Hispanics within the OCC, senior leadership, tone at the top. These things I emphasize to the entire staff. We need to do better uh, at the OCC. Well, each of your agencies have an impact on capital formation and allocation, financial regulation, consumer protection issues, all of which impact, of course, every single community in the nation. But if we've learned anything from the financial crisis and now the pandemic, it's that it's economic turmoil disproportionately harms minority communities. And if your workforce, particularly at senior levels, does not have adequate such representation, the needs of those communities will continue to be overlooked and underserved. And that's why I, I raise this issue. Uh, I, uh, Controller Sue, I was very happy to read your proposal to rescind the Trump era Community Reinvestment Act rule, which in my view would have gutted an important civil rights law. And I hope your work on a revamped CRA is going to help address minority small business owners' lack of access to credit, a problem that played a major role uh, in how unequally the pandemic impacted minority communities. Now, as part of all of your uh, annual Office of Minority and Women Inclusion reports, each of your agencies report the results from diversity self-assessments submitted by the financial institutions you regulate. However, the submission rates for these voluntary reports seem extremely low. 19% for FDIC, 9.8% for OCC, and at NCUA, only 188 credit units, uh, credit unions submitted such an assessment. Now, Chair McWilliams, as part of your diversity, equity, and inclusion strategic plan, you propose to streamline and enhance your diversity self-assessment to increase submissions. Uh, what does streamline mean? Because I hope streamline here doesn't mean we're cutting down on useful information. Um, I, I believe your agency should work towards increased participation rates in these diversity assessments. Um, and increased participation shouldn't come at the cost of critical information. Uh, Senator, actually, I'm glad you mentioned the number. The number is 19.5% response rate, rate, which is the highest response rate, frankly, because I pushed for it. And 2020 was the year when we achieved the highest response rate from our institutions. As you're probably aware, the statute uh, prevents us from mandating disclosures. So we are working. We have um, 
I would say the best um, with the rector uh, on the planet. Uh, and she has made this her priority, Nikita Pearson, who's, who's just a phenomenal addition to our team. Uh, and we're going to do whatever it takes to make sure that our expectations of banks are known and that we're working together in this area, both to increase our um, hiring of diverse candidates as well as to making sure that our institutions focus on this effort, especially to mirror the communities that they serve. But streamlining doesn't mean, I hope, giving up critical information. The reason we ask for this information is to be able to make the, the, have the science and the facts to make the case when, in fact, institutions are not being diverse. So I hope that when, I, you know, sometimes I hear reform and I get nervous because what we reform ends up being bad, bad, worse than what we reformed. And when I hear streamlining, I get a sense that maybe we're cutting out critical information. Well, I will put your uh, concerns to rest. Streamline, in this case, meant creating an online portal that makes it easier for the institutions okay. to comply and working with small banks to know how to comply. Okay, and Ken, if I have one final question, Mr. Chairman, do all of you, uh, as leaders of your agency, have you set internal targets for the response rate of these voluntary self-assessment reports? We do not have an internal target. I am disappointed by the, by the response rate. We uh, would be supportive of mandatory reporting. Do you have an internal? We don't have an, uh, because of the, of the statutory language, which prevents us from requiring this, uh, this self-assessment. But you could still have an internal response rate a goal uh, and try to make it clear to the institutions underneath you that it would be desirable for them to. We have done so. Uh -huh. So you have an internal response rate? We don't have, we have, well, we have a rate, response rate that's 19.5 percent. That's, that's an actual rate, and every year we strive is, to get it, a better But is, is, that, is that what you have set as your goal, 19.5 percent? I don't know, Senator, that we can set a goal given that we can't require it. But you I can, can always you. set a goal even if something isn't required. That's not an excuse. Uh, uh, controller, what, what can you tell me? I mean, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, Absolutely. No, um, we do not have a, a goal set, although we do seek to achieve to improve it year after year. Um, I and each of the board members regularly speak about it. We'll be having a diversity, equity, uh, and inclusion summit where we will be emphasizing the need to well, uh, increase diversity. Equity. Diversity starts by a commitment at the top, by setting goals, and having entities and individuals that pursue those goals. So I look forward to working with all of you more intensely on this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Menendez.